So this video is about the respiratory system um, and the respiratory system's function or its job is to take care of gas exchange. Uh, the gases that we're going to talk about uh, and the respiratory system is involved with is oxygen, which we signify as O2, and carbon dioxide, which we signify as C. O2. So we got oxygen and carbon dioxide. Our body needs to take these things in and get rid of these things or exchange uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide. So the first thing is, we, like we said, the job of the respiratory system is for gas exchange. So why do our bodies need oxygen? And why do our bodies need to get rid of carbon dioxide? So let's take these things one at a time. Why do our bodies need oxygen? Well, the simple answer for that is cellular respiration. Okay. Cellular respiration is the process to make energy, and in that it takes um, this thing called um, glucose. It's a sugar. Glucose. There we go. Um, that is a sugar. Okay. It's C6H12O6, um, and oxygen. Okay. It takes glucose and oxygen. And from that makes carbon dioxide, water, and most importantly, energy. That's the same energy to pay attention to this video and learn stuff, uh, to get out of bed in the morning, to do 5,000 jumpy jacks, to play Xbox, to do ballet pirouettes, to do all the things that your body needs to do and that you want to do. Um, cellular respiration is the process for our bodies to use, make energy. Um, like we said, we in all of that needs oxygen in order to do it. The other thing, why do our bodies need to get rid of carbon dioxide? Well, we just said that we need oxygen to make energy. But one of the things besides energy that we make is this thing right here, carbon dioxide. And if we have too much carbon dioxide in our body, it becomes toxic, which means we could die from it. So why do we need oxygen? Well, to make energy to do all the bodily functions that we need to do. Uh, why do we need to get rid of carbon dioxide? Well, because carbon dioxide can be toxic and we don't want to die. So. Our lungs are responsible for exchanging carbon dioxide and oxygen. We inhale oxygen, we exhale carbon dioxide. Um, that shouldn't be too much of a, of a of big leap in, in terms of uh, grasping concepts here. Um, if you take a deep breath in and hold it, go ahead, do it right now. <gasps> Why do your lungs stay the same size when you hold it? Okay, what is happening to keep them the same size, right? Because if you take that deep breath in, shouldn't your oxygen go into your body? Well, then your lungs should deflate, okay? Well, what's happening is this process called diffusion, okay? And before we get going too much further, let's talk about what diffusion is, okay? Diffusion is when uh, something moves from an area of high concentration, where there's a lot of it, to an area of low concentration, where there's not so much. So anytime we move something from an area of high concentration to low concentration, that's called diffusion. When you inhale, the blood in the capillaries, okay, blood in the capillaries, in your lungs are low. Okay, so the blood at the capillaries in your lungs are low in oxygen. So right here, see, I don't see any oxygen here. Okay, and high in carbon dioxide. Okay, so low in oxygen, high in carbon dioxide in the blood, which is kind of what I see. I don't see any O2 in here, and I see lots of carbon dioxide. Okay, now the lungs, which is over here, is high in oxygen, right? Oxygen, 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 oxygen. And low in carbon dioxide. See, I don't see any CO2s over here, OK? 
okay? So that's what we're saying. Now, <clears throat> don't get it twisted. Diffusion happens for the same substance. So carbon dioxide is going to diffuse from the blood to the lungs because we have an area of high concentration in the blood and an area of low concentration of carbon dioxide in the lungs. So it, even if all of this oxygen was gone, we would still have diffusion of carbon dioxide because we're going from an area of high concentration in the blood of carbon dioxide to an area of low concentration of carbon dioxide in the lungs. And we can flip the script as well, okay? We could pretend that there is no carbon dioxide here at all in any way, shape, or form, and we would still have diffusion of oxygen from an area of high concentration of oxygen in the lungs to an area of low concentration of oxygen in the blood. So we would still have diffusion. They're going to happen independently of one another. Okay, so that's diffusion. So, how far does diffusion go? Well, like we said, if we backtrack for just a second, we're going to have our carbon dioxide. Uh, it's going to go from an area of high concentration to low concentration. So now we're going to have carbon dioxide over here. High concentration of carbon dioxide to low concentration of carbon dioxide. So we got CO2 over here. Same thing's going to happen with our oxygen. Oxygen is going to go from high concentration of lungs to low concentration in the blood. So we got oxygen here. Diffusion high to low. We got oxygen here. Okay, diffusion high to low, we got oxygen here. And how far does this go? Meaning how far is diffusion gonna happen until it stops? Well, the simple answer to that is when the concentrations are equal, okay? Or when we're in equilibrium. Um, a lot of times on a side note, it's called dynamic equilibrium. Equ Okay, dynamic means movement, so maybe you'll still get a carbon dioxide to come over here, but another carbon dioxide is just going to go right back. Or an oxygen will still come over here, but another oxygen will come right back. So um, what it comes down to, though, is, is the diffusion from high concentration to low concentration will stop once all everything is equal. Okay, so right now if we counted up the oxygens, one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, on uh, over here in the blood, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven over here in the lungs. Seven and seven. So because the oxygen is equal on both sides, oxygen will stop diffusing. Okay, because they're equal. Which also brings up the point as why. Uh, let's do a different color here. Why CPR works. How come mouth-to-mouth -mouth works? A lot of people think that when you exhale, all you exhale out is carbon dioxide. That's not true. Because equilib we just said diffusion is going to stop once the concentrations are equal. So right now, this oxygen and this oxygen and all the other oxygens that are still in the lungs are going to be exhaled out of the body. So when a person, yes, they're breathing in, and yes, they're getting oxygen into their bloodstream, but they're not going to get all of the oxygen that they breathe in because diffusion stops when the concentration is equal on both sides. So when this person exhales out, they're going to exhale out oxygen as well. So when you're rescue breathing or giving CPR, the person that you're giving CPR to is actually factually still getting oxygen because of diffusion and equilibrium. Okay, so there's lots of parts going on and we'll show you a diagram in a moment, but to know and learn all the parts um, is pretty important. And again, this is for oxygen going in Okay, into the body. So we start outside the body and we're working inside of the body. So obviously we're going to have outside the body, okay, or the atmosphere right here. Then we're going to go through the oral or mouth, same thing, or nasal cavity, right? You can breathe through your mouth or your nose. 
Uh, then the oxygen is going to move past the pharynx um, and then into the trachea. Trachea is also known as or sometimes referred to as your windpipe. Um, and you have two lungs, okay? You're going to have a bronchus coming off of each lung, going to each lung, okay? Uh, so right now, if you can imagine, you got your trachea, which is your windpipe, and two lungs. So you're going to have a, a bronchus going to one lung, a bronchus going to the other lung. And then you have bronchioles, okay? So that's more branches coming off the bronchi, okay? At the end of the bronchioles are alveoli and alveoli sacs. Uh, and those are also surrounded by um, part of the bloodstream at the end, uh, which is capillaries. So going for oxygen in, we're going through your oral or nasal cavity, through, past your pharynx, trachea, bronchus, bronchioles, alveoli, alveolar sacs. Okay, so again, talking about oxygen in through the nasal cavity, you could have gone through the oral cavity too, it doesn't matter. We're going to go into the pharynx, from the pharynx past the, tr uh, sorry, past the larynx, um, which is essentially your voice box, okay. Uh, after the larynx, we're going to go through the trachea, which is this tube right here and into a bronchus. Could have easily been this bronchus over here too. From your bronchus, it's gonna split into bronchioles. Okay, and then once it's at the bronchioles, if you can follow me down here, okay, so in through the bronchioles and then into, see that we got a circle here and a circle here. Each one of those grape looking things uh, is an alveoli sac. Um, the alveolar sac is also surrounded by these things called capillaries, okay? C-A-P. Okay, capillaries. Capillaries is technically part of the bloodstream. The bloodstream, which is your circulatory system. Okay, your circulatory system. So it's here through these capillaries where the gas exchange happens, where the carbon dioxide will go from the bloodstream to the lungs, right here at this alveoli in the capillaries, where this oxygen that we're talking about being from um, the bronchioles will go into these alveoli and then diffuse into the capillaries into your bloodstream. Okay. So just a quicker look, again, talking about the oxygen coming in, down to the bronchioles, into the alveoli, and then diffuse into the capillaries, okay, into the capillaries. And then your carbon dioxide will go from your capillaries into the alveoli, and then bronchioles, bronchus, trachea, larynx, et cetera, et cetera, until it's out. Here's one more closer look at this whole concept between the bronchioles and the capillaries, again, um, and the alveolar sacs. Uh, again, oxygen from the bronchioli to the alveoli will diffuse from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration in the capillaries. Now we got oxygen in the bloodstream at the capillary. Your blood in the capillary that has high concentration of carbon dioxide will now diffuse the carbon dioxide into the alveoli. The alveoli will then go into the bronchiole, to the bronchus, et cetera, et cetera, until it's out of the body. So here we're talking about the pathway for carbon dioxide out. Um, so we're going to start in the capillaries. Remember, that's blood in our body. We're going to go from the capillaries to the alveoli, to the bronchioles, bronchus, trachea, larynx, which is our voice backed in their pharynx, out of our mouth oral cavity or nasal cavity, okay, and then finally outside our body. It's the exact opposite of oxygen in. One last thing that we need to take care of is the diaphragm. 
the diaphragm is a muscle that, uh, and you see it's right here, okay? It's a muscle in our body just underneath our lungs. It kind of helps separate our lungs and heart, that cavity, the thoracic cavity, from our abdomen, okay, or our abdominal cavity um, down here, like where our stomach and intestines are. Um, but what it does is when the diaphragm is contracted, Okay? Think of like flexing a muscle. That's what contract means. It's actually flat. The diaphragm is flat when it's contract. And that means we're breathing and taking oxygen in. When the diaphragm relaxes, okay, that, moves its, that means the diaphragm moved up. Well, when the diaphragm moved up, when it relaxed, that means now we're pushing air out so we're getting carbon dioxide out so when we breathe in when we breathe in our diaphragm will contract and flatten okay when we're breathing out our diaphragm relaxes and moves up as we're breathing out. So at this stage, you should be able to describe the path an oxygen molecule would take from the outside environment, so outside of your body, all the way to the capillaries surrounding your alveoli. And don't forget the, oops, don't forget the action of the diaphragm. You should also be able to describe the path a molecule of carbon dioxide would take, starting with the capillaries or your blood surrounding the alveoli, and go all the way to the outside environment. Again, do not forget about, if I can spell here, your diaphragm and how that controls the breathing. And that is all for the respiratory system. It's like this and like that and like this, Anna. It's like that and like this and like that, Anna. It's like this. So just chill to the next episode. <laughs>